welcome to Down to Your Way. I'm Colin Speller. In this third in the series of 10 tracks for self-isolation, tables are turned as Rebecca interviews me about my choices. Hello and welcome to another edition of Downs Your Way with my amazing manager, Mr. Colin Speller. It's Downs Your Way. Da, 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 da. It's, it's Downs down Your Way. way. Yes. Da, da. Oh, I'm going to stop now before somebody slaps me. Okay, so we're with Colin because we've been doing these 10 uh, tracks for being stuck on an island, but it might as well be called 10 tracks for isolation. That's how we've rechristened it 10 yeah. tracks for self isolation. And so we're going to hear what are the top 10 tracks of Mr. Colin Speller. And he has got, to be fair to him, I'm just looking down the list, he's got some, you know, he's got some good good stuff on there. He ain't that bad, do you know what I mean? I like his eclectic choices. Ooh. Ooh. So, Mr. Colin Speller, I don't know why I'm talking like that. Can you give me your first track of the top 10 I should say before we get into the individual tracks, I've had real trouble with this because I would find it very difficult. I think you said you wanted 10 tracks that you could hear over and over again. And mm. I get very impatient with music in a sense that I can listen to it for a while and then it has to, it drops away and then I come back to it. So I'm going to put a cheat in at the end to help me try and deal with that. And the other thing is, given that these are all album tracks, I'd rather hope I could sneak the albums across rather that than just... That is not appropriate. But I shall try. I shall try. But my first one comes from possibly the first album I ever bought with my own money mm. back in about 1971. Mm-hmm. And that was Four Way Street by Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, which actually was my first of very, very many live albums, as, as you will you see. You do going, love a live album. I do love a live album. He does, and, you know, he loves a live album. And I could have chosen lots of tracks from this, because I absolutely love it. For those who don't know it, there's uh, the double vinyl originally had one acoustic album and one electric album, and it was just a, it was a live performance absolutely stonking, very raw in mm. places. Obviously, they didn't have the recording uh, equipment that they've got these days. And the track I've chosen from it is actually from the the electric album, and it's it's Ohio, uh, a Neil Young number um, written in 1970 to, um, as a protest song, really, classic rock protest against the uh, Kent State shootings mm-hmm. when in which the Ohio National Guard marched in, uh, drew guns, as uh, as they're fond of doing, um, and and basically killed four students and badly injured several others. And this is a this is a very raw, angry, you know, rockers protest. Mm. And it takes me back to my days as a believe it or not, long haired hippie. <laughs> we need photographic <laughs> evidence of this. Uh, it might be difficult to obtain. Um, a long haired mm. hippie, and I just I sort of got the whole kind of protest of it. The the lyrics are really you know, burning, like, tin soldiers and Nixon coming, we're finally on our own. This summer I hear the drumming, four dead in Ohio. And it's, mm. yeah, it's it's a great song. And it's, um, it, it, it sort of brought home to me the, the power and passion of music to really make a statement, but of mm. contemporary music, I should say, to really make a statement. So yeah, Ohio, the live version from Four Way Street. Now, let's move on to your track two of your all-time sort of isolation classics. Well, I've kicked off with the theme of live albums, and I think this is possibly my favourite live album in terms of its introduction. There's one that runs it close, but this is um, uh, the live album Viva uh, from Roxy Music in 1976, and the track is out of the blue. It's the opening number. Um, the album was recorded at three different venues, but this was Newcastle City Hall in October 1974. And it, they just they just come out of the blocks. It's it's just an amazingly raw, passionate, excellently delivered opening track. And you know if you if you sort of you want your your headline act to come on. 
there's no sort of messing around with instruments or anything. There's a sort of drum beat that, that starts and then bang, the drummer hits the first um, smack on the snare drum and they're off and they just absolutely rip it up from the word go. Can't say the rest of the album necessarily you know, keeps mm. that pace going. It, it, it fades in one or two places, but it is, it's a great live album, played very loud, um, just and it's it's the it's the presence of the song I think although um, it's got a, a a sentiment to it which I think we all hope to be able to mm. look back on this particular time and and think hey, there's some words which go now I know there's a future for all of us not so long ago I was so scared so you know hopefully in a few weeks or months time we'll we'll, we'll be able to echo that sentiment but. Um, yeah, it's just the it's the presence of the song. It's the, it's it's the impact that it has, and as an opening number to a live act, I think it's absolutely superb. If you like that sort of thing, I mean, I appreciate Roxy Music's not everybody's cup of tea. The use of an oboe and an electric violin <laughs> doesn't always, you know, um, hit everybody. Hit the right notes with everybody, but it is it's a it's a fantastic opening track to a live album. Great stuff. Right then, so moving from rocks and music, where do we go to now, Colin, for your third track? <clears throat> well, believe it or not, this is from a live album. No way, <laughs> really? I'd have never guessed it. Um, it's Genesis, it's Seconds Out, and it's Supper's Ready, and it's going on that theme. You know, this is, this is a track, in inverted commas, that occupies an entire one side of the original vinyl. Uh, so th- there's a bit of a trick there in sort of keeping myself amused just by sheer length of, of music. Um, I, I, what can I say about Genesis? Always like their stuff, um, particularly the early stuff with Peter Gabriel. Then they sort of reinvented themselves again, I guess, in the kind of 90s with, you know, some good live performances. I had a, two live albums. I think it was called The Long and The Shorts, if I can remember right. I used to listen to a lot in the car. Um, th- this... This is quite an interesting one, really, because this this album it was recorded across some tours that they did, and it has a particular poignancy to me because um, I was in a teenage relationship that had gone on for quite a long time and was um, probably gone on longer than it should have done, really, and it it came to an end um, in the year of seventy seven when this album came out, and one of the uh, big cracks that appeared was to discover that the girl I was going out with had gone off with somebody else to watch Genesis live on this tour. Well, you know, you just had to ditch her. (laughs) Well, no, it was the other way around. That was was the preliminary to her, you know, announcing that uh, she wanted to go off with this chap. And to be fair, uh, just in case she's listening in, because we're still loosely in touch, um, yeah, they got married and had children and lived happily ever after. So oh, really you had a big go. tick in the box for them. But I, I always associate that whenever I hear this album, and it comes up quite regularly when I'm listening on my uh, electronic device, um, yeah. uh, I, always, I always think of that. Um, just again, a great live album, really. And some fantastic music. It sort of captures a period of Genesis's work, uh, so that, you know it's good representation of their of their best tracks on there. Um, Supper's ready, you know, arguably their sort of masterpiece track of the time. You know, discuss um, seconds out. It's been re released a couple of times, so it it must have been quite popular. Certainly got good reviews at the time. And I also know because of the the way Genesis used drums, I've 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 met a couple of drummers who actually refer to this album as the sort of uh, a, a Damascian conversion for them as drummers, you know, mm. it's made them take up the drums, having having heard the the particular uh, drumming on the on this album. But mm. yeah, Supper's Ready, Seconds Out, Genesis, nineteen seventy seven, re released several times. Right then, so moving from Genesis, the drummer's paradise, uh, from that album to. The fourth song on your list, and surprisingly, it's not a live album. It isn't a live album. Um, It marks an interesting turning point in my listening, because I think this is the first album I actually bought on CD. Mm. I did go off and uh, have to sort of recreate my entire record collection on on CD. And I'm going to say, if I haven't said anything controversial before in these podcasts, I'm certainly going to say something very controversial now. Oh, God. Because I'm not a fan of vinyl. I've never liked vinyl. You can literally hear people slamming 
things and throwing Absolutely. things at the wall right now. I understand everything about the sound quality and the the sleeves and the feel of it and the, but for me it used to frustrate the hell out of me because of the crackling and the scratching and the banging and the need to get up every 20 minutes and change it over and the day they invented cds i just went yes i had a similar moment n years later when they invented digital mm. um and i appreciate again the difference even between cds and digital but the fact we'll come back to later I can have my entire music collection on my telephone mm. is for me particularly in a modern world where you get to listen to it really when you're out and about but anyway rewind CDs have come in it's his Paul Simon and the album is Graceland and the track is the boy in the bubble um Graceland an amazing album uh, mm. I, I need to say no more about that um I was absolutely taken with it, listened to it again and again and again. And I, I know I must have listened to it a lot because I remember one day driving along um, and you'll, you'll be horrified at the thought of this and don't worry, I'm not going to repeat it, but I, I was actually singing uh, without the music on and I was singing Diamonds on the Soles of Her Shoes and I just, I sang the line, Diamonds on the Soles of Her Shoes and my little son who was sitting in the back in his car seat completely unprompted and totally in time went, Owa, Owa. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> Which is, as those will know, the track is exactly... Mm. So, yeah, I obviously listened to it quite a lot. Um, his most successful studio album. I just, I just love it. I, the Boy in the Bubble, it's the, it's the story it tells and the complexity of the lyrics. You, you really wouldn't want to be given this as you head towards the karaoke microphone, would you? No. Uh, the, de the dead sort of antithesis of the... Uh, songs built around sort of five lines this one um which i believe is the only one he actually composed on his trip to south africa where the whole graceland thing came together um just imagery inspired by the assassination of kennedy um and the shooting of ronald reagan um but you know nevertheless a, a great song complex lyrics just yeah great album as i said hopefully i could sneak the album in as well as this song but if i had to pick one this would be it Right, so we head onwards to track five, Colin. Well, I'm sort of, I can, I know the musical tastes of lots of the people who might listen to this, and I can imagine that they're already sort of, you know, gnashing and wailing, gnashing their teeth at some of the choice. Oh, I, I don't know, but I, some good stuff there. I'm not sure about this one. Um, I'm going to put it out there. I, I'm a great fan of the Pet Shop Boys. Um, I again, music has a place, doesn't it, in your, uh, in, you know, in your life, if you like. So uh, I've talked about the Genesis album, uh, the the Graceland was, you know, a particular time. Um, uh, the Pet Shop Boys and and their albums uh, represent to me the mid eighties. I was living in Leeds, moved up there, lived in Leeds for four years um a, you know a particular time in my life and a particular time in my career um and this the track i've chosen is from the album actually in 1987 and it couldn't happen here which it, it was part of a of a musical film that the pet shop boys made mm -hmm. and uh the, the the aforementioned son who was a troublesome little little chap when he was young mm -hmm. uh, didn't sleep through the night until he was three and a half uh long m m many other stories uh, took a lot of amusement at times and I for some reason had got this out on VHS tape from the local tape shop mm. and decided to watch it and he was absolutely taken with it <laughs> from start to finish mm. and and he would sit on my lap and watch this and the bit that he really liked is a scene where a man leaves home and goes to work and the the, the background is it said every time dad used to leave the house in a flaming temper Mm. And it shows this man walking out of the house on fire. You know, mm. obviously set this actor up in a fireproof suit and he walks down the road carrying his briefcase, apparently in his city gent stuff, with flames mm. leaping off him. And, uh, you know, son Nick just was completely taken <laughs> with that whole thing. So, uh, yeah, it's it's from a moment in time, really. But I, I had um, that album and another couple of others that they brought out at the same time. And as I said, it just sits in that particular phase of my life when I was living in Leeds. 
um, had the small boy, and it was um, it, it was music that I just I just liked and listened to a lot, and particularly suitable because of its electronic nature for playing on C- the CD format. I haven't actually watched that film, so I'll dig that out. Actually, I won't mind watching that. Well, it's got the... It, I suppose you've seen possibly quite a bit of it in individual music videos. Mm. I mean, it's got the telephone box scene where he's singing with Dusty Springfield. Yeah, um, I love Dusty Springfield. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, mm. it's, a, it's an amusing little number. Right, moving on to the next track. And this is the band who I have a lot of love for myself, so... Colin, which track and which band and which album? Well, again, going back to what I said at the outset, I'd really struggle, I think, if I was forced to go into one place with this particular lot, because I think I've got just about everything they've ever done. It's The Cure. Um, Yeah, you know, famous for um, the the nature of their music, music to commit suicide by once somebody once famously said to me i'm not sure i quite agree with that no. but the the wish album of 92 has some absolutely amazing numbers on it i know it's not one of the of the big trilogy of disintegration blood flowers and whatever the other one is the name's gone completely out of my head um but it, it it's one that i particularly like it's got from the edge of the deep green sea letter to elise doing the unstuck friday i'm in love and it's got this track, which is Trust, and it's it's a very simple track. It's a very uh, moving track, I think. The music's particularly moving. And it's a story of, of, of if you like, putting your faith in somebody and, and, and not having that rewarded, you know, sort of a, an unrequited love, if you like, you know, be, being with somebody that you, you know, want want to be with, you want to be, you know, part of their life, and, and you get nothing back. And, and it's... Um, you know, the, the words and still the hardest part for you to put your trust in me is just, you know, mm. resonates with me from, from a, you know, a particular situation. So that's that's why I've chosen that particular track. But I would cheerfully take the album and I would cheerfully take all their other albums as well. Mm. I say cheerfully, that seems slightly oxymoronic under the circumstances. Cure, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, something. I mean, Blood Flowers is a, is a mm. fantastic album. I, I, you know, that... They, they sort of fell away quite a lot after that, in my humble opinion. But that was a, an, another pinnacle, and I could have easily chosen one of the tracks uh, from them, like uh, Maybe Sunday. But you've got to stick, you've got to, you've got to squeeze yeah. this down to ten, and the, the ten of the week is includes uh, Trust from Wish 1992. This next track comes as no surprise to me because I know how much you love this band and when we're driving in the van with the rest of the band he's got his iPod music on and he's always shuffling through tracks of this band so go ahead Colin number seven well, if you're coming around to you know music of a certain of a certain type, I suppose the the the, of the cure esque in a way, but but a perhaps slightly different. REM. I I'm a great fan of REM. I I always have been. Uh, I love their stuff. Um, part of what drives my sort of top ten choice is is songs that I can attempt to sing along with. I shall say no more. Mm-hmm. Um, the band have had to put up with that from time to time, but as I pointed out to them, my job when I'm driving them back at two in the morning is to keep them alive. And if me having music along and singing along to it is a key ingredient of that, <laughs> they just have to put up with it, stick some earplugs in and go to sleep. Um, and I've got the live album from, if we're back again on the same theme, from 2005. It is just called That Live. And this is The Great Beyond, um, which is a song they wrote specifically for the film Man on the Moon. Um uh, but I just, I, I suppose I heard it first without ever realising that. And I just, it's so, the, the lyrics are so R.E.M.-esque in that you really wouldn't have a clue what they're on about. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm pushing an elephant up the stairs. I'm tossing out punchlines that were never there. Over my shoulder, a piano falls, crashing to the ground. I mean, it's, it, I, you know, there is one point in one song, I can't remember which it is, where he actually laughs at his own lyrics and they left it in. <laughs> Um, it's just, it's, it's fantastic. It's almost like a, I suppose the music equivalent of taking a thesaurus and sort of, you know, Mm. those are great lyrics. Yeah, they are great lyrics because they, they leave you to your own imagination, don't they? To know what it's about, you know, are they metaphorical, allegorical? What the hell are they? But you Mm. just, but it is, it's a great song and the version on the live, in fact, all the live tracks on this album are really, um, 
superbly done uh they were on great form and it actually came with a dvd as well so if you 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 could sit down and watch it on on telly Mm. which i did a few times but i love this stuff um and i i could listen to it uh, and indeed have on you know one spectacular occasion when i had to drive a very long way i put my ipod on rem shuffle can you imagine what i was i was on my own (laughs) (laughs) if i hadn't been i would have been quite quickly i'm sure but i actually let it scroll through every Every rem every track that i had and and i enjoyed it um so yeah rem Right, this next track, um, again, comes from a band that I very much like myself as well. Um, And they are an electronic, almost symphonic electronica, I would tag them as. But anyway, what's this track? What's the band? Well, I can't remember who introduced me to the band Hertz. Well, I can actually, because I'm looking at her. (laughs) so yeah, it's a synth pop duo as they're as they're mm. described. Uh, this came out in in 2010 and actually got pretty much panned by the critics. Mm. It has to be said. Um, it it got what I think is politely called mixed reviews. Uh, I think some of the critics thought it was too simplistic and they were trying to be somebody else, etc. But I think the album Happiness is is it's a lovely. super superb album. It's great. I I actually found out about them because I was driving the car. I had a radio station on, and they played one of the tracks off it, and I had to pull over the car and find out what the track was. I was just thought that is, you know, it doesn't matter what genre it is. If it's a great song, it's a great song. So that's kind of how I found them. But yeah, and yeah, and I remember you mentioned them to me on Passant, and I got got hold of the mm. album, and it it's. Again, it's powerful, it's passionate right mm-hmm. the way through. I don't think there's a bum track on it. Mm-hmm. And the one I've chosen is, is, is Sunday, um, which is a, a track that has, again, a particular resonance to me. It's about being apart from somebody and wishing you were back together with them. And um, being, uh, you know, and, and the fact that Sunday always seemed to be the day when that kind of hit hit you hardest, you know. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, so, yeah, that was that's why that one sticks out. But again, I would love to sneak the album on board. Um, I would also accidentally pick up their second album, Exile, from mm. 2013 as well. Not that they, in my humble opinion, it's as good. It's uh, but it, there's still some decent tracks on there, some nice, good tracks on there. They've, yeah, I've listened to their subsequent stuff without really being taken by it with mm. quite the same. But I think... Uh, yeah, Happiness, the album from 2010, Sunday, the track, that would be definitely be on my list. Right, I'm going to be honest, and I think you've had a massive cop-out with this, because I think you've sneaked in something that's kind of a little bit like, is it allowed, is it not allowed? Hmm, go on then, Spella, tell me. No, it's very tongue in cheek. This really, but I, I again, and I can, I can sense the purists running for cover here. I'm a huge fan of '90s electronic dance and trance music. That's uh, all right. Um, you know, people have had worse. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know why. I guess I, it was probably at a time when. Um, I know, again, my son was listening to stuff and I used to go and pinch his CDs and, you know, down, just rip them on to, to, to something so I, I could hear them. Um, and I, I kind of, again, it's great driving music. Mm. Uh, it, you know, if you just you just got your eyes on, you know, your hands on the wheel and eyes on the road and you've got a long way to go, the sort of beat kind of keeps you going and, you know, the van's rattling away and I can, I, that's... And I don't have to sing along to it, which preserves you a lot, you know, from that uh, particular experience. So it's a great one for driving. Um, I'm being a bit tongue in cheek here because what I actually put on the list was the Classic House continuous mix from the Classic House album by Pete Tong and the Heritage Orchestra with Jules Buckley from 2016. Now, this is Pete Tong and Jules Buckley putting together an orchestra to perform, I think it's 17 or 18 classic Ibiza dance tracks from the 90s it's so got 17 thing. tracks in one basically yeah this the, well if you oh. if, if, if you took the continuous mix which is the first track you'd hear the lot so that is cheating i know yeah. but it's got some great stuff on there it's got robert miles's children atb's 9 p.m till i come it's mm. got faithless's insomnia it's got strings of life 
Oh, yeah, it's got some... Oh, right here, right now by Fatboy Slim. Right here, right now. A better right version. Right, right now, now. sorry. A, a, just just a, happened, a, it just, just took over. Took right? over, you see, that's it. It, get, it gets to you. It, it, a better version, actually, than the original, if I, if I say. And the other thing is, I have seen this performed. I saw it performed at Birmingham Arena. It's a fantastic show. Um, I mean, it did cost a bit of money to get in, but you actually felt you were getting value for money because there were bloody hundreds of musicians at the other end of the room. And they and the light show and everything, it, it, it was absolutely superb. If you forced me to say, no, 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 you can't do that, you can't have the first track, which is a continuous mix, you've got to pick one, then it would have to be Faithless's Insomnia. Oh, I love that. It, just a, a, what a track. Uh, how, can you, how can you build music from mm. such a basic premise i think there's a lot of the dance music's like this where you've basically got a, a riff which you sort of repeat What's and build hypno- hypnotic value of it really it is and the, and the i inst- can't get no sleep sorry yeah. I'm, I'm already there i've got my uh what is it laser stick light stick in my hand my, no i haven't but when you see <laughs> them doing it live and the whole you know when they get to the to the main bit and mm. the whole you know there's thousands of people all bouncing up mm. and down along to it i i just yeah i mean i just i love i love that stuff so yeah if i could cheat i'd take the whole out you know really the whole album in one track but if i was if i had to if i had to uh go for it it would be faithless's insomnia and um yeah what a great track what a great album <laughs> Over to you, number 10. Well, there's a whole load of music which didn't make the cut, and I feel really bad about that because there's some stuff that's I, really important to me. Um, yes, yes, get on than, with it. <laughs> more than 10 tracks, you know, would, would I, I desperately want to take more than 10 tracks. And I'm thinking of bands like Madness, which I love, that haven't even got a look in. Um, but I had to put this in because I think there's, well, there's several reasons for it, really. Uh, first of all, um, I needed to recognise the fact that um, if I hadn't got involved with this particular enterprise, uh, you know, my life these days would be very different. (laughs) You know, you're talking to someone who had a 39-year career working for uh, the same business, uh, got, you know, eventually to sort of running it, uh, had a very sort of hairy end to that because we had to go through a long and complicated process to sort of keep the business alive byproduct of which was I lost my job or my, my I was I was retired in inverted commas but in the meantime I'd got involved with the music business which is why I'm sitting here now burbling away and a certain party in the music business who's that, uh, who's that? and um, I, I, I have to recognize the fact that the music deserves a place on this list and a particular track I've chosen is Stand On My Feet from More Sinner Than Saint by a certain Rebecca Downs brackets 2019 never heard and if you want to know more about Stand On My Feet, then I refer you back to a previous episode where the gestation of this track was covered in some detail. But mm. uh, for me, um, you know, there's a lot of your music which sort of references experiences in your life which haven't gone terribly well, mm. and etc., etc. Et um, what I like about Stand On My Feet, uh, which, which also you know references that, but it's a song of confidence and defiance and Mm. determination um and that sentiment is needed more than ever today really with what we're all facing and i think it's it's a you know from that album it's a track of the moment really i mean again and i i say this not because i want to and i use the phrase (laughs) carefully blow smoke up your ass but uh, uh, more sinner than saint uh it's characterised for me by being an album that has 12 tracks on it which are you fight to put in a pecking order you know a lot of the albums even the ones I've mentioned here will have one two three in the case of Paul Simon's Rhythm of the Saints is that is that what the album was called mm-hmm. that's where the track came from mm-hmm. that was the only track I liked I mean I mm-hmm. bought Graceland mm-hmm. I went out and bought that because I they, that released that thing. oh this is a great song this is a great mm-hmm. song I'll go and get that and you, 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 that was the only track mm. I could have, these days, um, you know, I would have probably just, you know, bought, the, bought and downloaded that, that track alone. Um, other bands that didn't make the cut, like, like Smashing Pumpkins, Melancholy and Infinite Sadness, one Great of my album. yeah best albums of all time. But not one, again, where I would, you know, I skip the tracks, I skip the ones I don't like. But uh, more Sinner Than Saint 
because of the gestation, because it took us so long to go through all of those um, demos and, and, and keep refining them, keep refining them and keeping that top 10, that top mm. 12 list turning over and over and over till the last minute. That was a process that delivered 12 superb tracks with, as I said, at least 19 or 20 on the cutting room floor, if you like, you know, yeah. or buried in this phone that's sat here with us at the moment. Mm. So you, you, yeah, but I, Stand On My Feet uh, always been probably my favourite, if there is such a thing. If it, if the others all had a score of 99, this would have a score of 100. It's mm. that close. But as I said, it's the tone of it. It's the it's the co- you know it's the the confidence of it, the determination of it, and yeah, very much keeping keeping with what we're trying to do at the moment. Thank you. Okay, so your luxury item, what would that be? And I think this is a bit of a bloody cheap, but anyway, go for it. Well, I don't see why it should be really. Um, so I've just basically said I take my iPhone. Uh, with a pair of headphones and a solar charger. See, that is a number of items. That's just not one luxury item. In my opinion, that's a collection of items. Well, we debated with Steve whether he could take his guitar strings, and I said he'd take a case with the strings inside. So I think I could get away with a little pack of iPhone charger and the Apple headphones. I mean, I need, comes to, in a box. I need to get some legal advice on this. Well, OK, because uh, without the solar charger, it would clearly be useless, wouldn't it? Yes. I mean, uh, in... in uh, in, in this mode of self-isolation. But uh, why would I take it? Not because I want to make any phone calls from wherever I am, but again, it's because I happen to have every track of music mm. that I've ever acquired on that machine. And that is probably, at the end of the day, what would keep me sane. Mm. Because I bet you if I had to do this list in a, a month's time even, uh, it, it would change. Mm. It wouldn't well, change. Well, same with me, you know. It's always changing. Of course it is. Yeah. It's always in different moods and mindsets. So it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, you know, stay the stay the same. And and I think, you know, having that access to the to the different music that's on there, it would still have its limitations because I've by no means got everything. But yeah, so that would be my cheaty cheat luxury item. Now I'm going to be honest. I think this is a bloody cheat as well. To be fair, <laughs> Colin, um, you are literally cheating your way through this, and I'm going to get some legal advice. So what is the book that you would take? Goodness me. Go uh, on, tell them. I would take the uh, compendium set of John Le Carre's George Smiley. Eight box set. Eight. <laughs> eight, not one. Eight. Just putting that out there. Eight. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so you can get all eight books in one. And I, I mean, I saw was interviewing a certain somebody about the Wool trilogy who said that Everything I do is different. She wanted to take all three. <laughs> so I'm only just extending that a little bit. Eight! Way. I love John le Carre. I love his writing. I love the George Smiley series. I love... I, I, and one of the reasons I really love it is because I was a civil servant once. I was a civil servant for 19 years. I've worked in in a technical part of government, but I also did a year uh, in the headquarters of the then Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries and Food, working on international trade. I am I have been to the EU. I have been to the World Trade Organization. I know how it works. Um, and a lot of what you read in the papers and online about it is utter crap, I can tell you. Um, but I like the way that the upper civil service works. And I mean, mm. we're seeing it in action now, dealing with this crisis, the, mm. the interaction between the technical advisors and the mm. politicians and all of that. It's a fabulous place to be. And of course, this is all about spying and the mm. Cold War, etc. Um, so, yeah, if I had to take one, if you if you really won your argument, then I'd take Tinker Taylor, Soldier Spy, um, which is the sort of definitive novel, that and uh, Smiley's People. Um, but I, I, I'd take that. But yeah, I just love the writing. I love the references to the sort of arcane civil service procedure, um, and it, and his service, as, as he calls it, what he worked for. I mean, what I worked for was called a service, and the internal politics and the characters back in the seventies and eighties are eerily similar to what mm. you read in these in these books. So it has a particular poignancy for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Right, so thank you very, very much for that. As you know, I do believe you've cheated, um, but I'm going to let it go because, you know, these are tough times and, you know, I'm a very, very warm-hearted person. Please don't say anything. So thank you for that. What I'll do is I'll put those on a playlist for Spotify and that will be 
on the Rebecca Downs profile on Spotify so you can have a listen to these tracks. I'll be having a listen to them because there's some on there I can remember sort of but not quite. So they're very interesting choices. Little bit cheeky, but there you go. Thank you very much, Colin Speller. Well, thank you for interviewing me. Thank you for listening to Downs Your Way. As usual, we have a merchandise discount code for this podcast, and this episode's code is SPELLER, all in capitals S P E L L E R. If you enter that at the right place on the checkout at rebeccadowns.com forward slash shop, you will receive a 10% discount on all items purchased. We will be back with you in two weeks' time with another episode. Thank you for listening. Yeah.